Hello friends, this is Durga again. As part of ITVersity, I am talking about uh, um, Hadoop certification, Cloudera certified associate um, using Spark and Hadoop developer. As part of the last video, I have covered word count program and I have used flat map, map and reduce key. In this video, I will try to explain how it actually executes when you run the program. So if you go back to the script, for the word count this is the script so it is a four step process the first one is to read the file and then uh, we have applied the flat map which is one form of map and then we have applied data map as part of flat map we have passed the delimiter as space and we have flattened each line into multiple words and then each word will be treated as uh, one record uh, for map so here that will be each word uh, after the flattening and then we are uh, creating the tuples of that word comma one and then we are invoking a function called reduce by key and we are aggregating the results uh, so we have covered the complete life cycle of uh, um, the basic uh, transformation of converting each line into word and then associating a numeric value one for each word and also we have seen aggregating uh, to get the word count so what will happen so as I have explained to you earlier um, uh, whether you use Scala or PySpark uh, to write the programs using Spark both the programming languages follow lazy evaluation which means that when it sees particular words uh, or particular functions then only the program will execute until then it will create the flow and uh, um, the uh, the PySpark interpreter or Spark shell interpreter uh, know uh, how to convert these statements into an efficient flow which means that if you have if you are doing the redundant jobs as part of the scripts uh, uh, spark shell or PySpark or uh, have the enough intelligence to reduce those redundancy and execute the script um, by creating the effective plan that being said when you actually hit the statements like uh, collect or for each if you are using uh, uh, spark shell what will happen is uh, it will submit the job uh, to the cluster and the cluster will look like this I am doing the whiteboard here so you, you will have the client from which you submit the job and then you have the slaves which are termed as worker nodes in the spark context and there there will be executor and uh, that executor will have multiple tasks so the bigger green square within this blue square is executor and the smaller ones are tasks so the processing will happen at these tasks and uh, when you get into the administration and under, try to understand uh, how to configure these uh, uh, memory settings you will come to know uh, and also while submitting the jobs also you need to be aware uh, of these uh, tasks uh, because you have to configure memory or you have to change the memory settings based upon the complexity and the data set you are trying to process as while running those jobs in the cluster I will try to demonstrate those things as part of one video uh, at the end of the course uh, but for now just remember that you will be submitting job from a client which is represented by this purple square and once the job is submitted uh, depending upon the data that is available it will fork the tasks under the executors and those tasks will actually process the data now uh, you see different kinds of tasks uh, and those tasks 
are based upon the function you are invoking for example map will invoke one kind of task and reduce will invoke another kind of task if you are doing a map reduce implementation in spark between map and reduce there will be a phase called shuffle phase Sh shuffle sorry shuffle phase so the output of the map uh, has to be shuffled before getting into the reducer and also the output of the mapper um, as part of the shuffle process will be partitioned based upon the hash value of the key for example in this case you have two maps one is flat map and the other one is map in both the cases it will partition the data into uh, multiple hash buckets hash bucket means for a given string or a numeric value and depending upon uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, values you should consider uh, you consider it will create a hash value so for example uh, if you say i want to get a hash value for string a b and c bit uh, um, um, from 1 to 100 values then uh, it will it will try to create a unique value uh, uh, means depending upon the hash function typically it will try to create a unique value for a between 1 to 100 uh, b between 1 to 100 c between 1 to 100 so uh, and so on if you have um, you can create a, a for any string like that so as long as uh, you does not, um, the typical implementation will be it will try to generate a unique value between 1 to 100 uh, and uh, uh, using that and, and it will be an integer so irrespective of the data type of the uh, input the output will be a unique number within this range uh, which will be an integer that's what hash value means typically when you compute hash in any of the uh, standard programming languages or uh, databases uh, that hash value range will be very high it could uh, be up to millions and sometimes even to billions or even trillions so that uh, each string will be generated a unique value uh, and uh, the uh, redundant values uh, uh, will decrease so that's what hash is uh, to to generate uh, unique values for any data type um, within the range of numeric values so that you can uh, um, apply or use uh, that hash value to create multiple buckets etc so in this case when we try to run the word count program uh, uh, when you run flat map the output will be multiple strings and uh, uh, for each string it will compute a hash value and it will assign a bucket for it uh, that's what happens at the map data will be partitioned based upon the hash and uh, if the uh, if if the number of values um, um, from your map or flat map output is less than 200 then uh, there won't be any sorting when it comes to uh, spark uh, it will just hash it and uh, maintain in separate hash bucket and uh, similarly when you do the uh, map uh, you, uh, we are assigning uh, a key uh, we, we are creating a tuple which is nothing but uh, key value pair where key is an word and value is one uh, so uh, first we have the flat map second map and then reduce so this this flat map will actually create a hash for each of the output and th those values will be passed to mapper internally and that one uh, will create tuple like this word comma one word one comma one word two comma one etc okay and now when you apply the reduce um, let me create one more so what will happen is for and there will be and, and, and 
different tasks that will be created. These are for flat map as well as map. And uh, what will happen is um, when you see the, uh, so the input of this will be word comma one. And within this, when these inputs are generated like word comma one, when we actually issue reduce, um, all these things will be clubbed if necessary into one task and try to execute. So when we see the functions like reduce by key, what will happen is depending upon the logic uh, you have typically if you will use reduce um, at the time of aggregations only if you don't want to do the aggregation then you should not use reduce instead you should use group by as we are trying to get the word count we have used the reduce by and in this what we are trying to is uh, trying to do is uh, as our input is like word one comma one word one comma one word two comma one etc we are trying to count uh, all the word ones and word twos word threes etc and uh, uh, the logic is to add these ones uh, which is part of this reduce by key function so what will happen is as part of this task itself it will add these values which is called as combine so here it will combine and let's say word one come to this um, task and what to come to this task sorry word one come to this task and word one uh, and what to come to this task and let's say you have 10 word ones and eight of the word ones go here two of the word ones go uh, go here so what it will do is it will compute word one eight here and then word one two word two one here and now this will go to another task so all this happen within within these tasks itself which are part of flat map and map as the uh, final task for reduce by key uh, there could be multiple based upon the number of keys but let's assume that it generate only one key because we are not processing much of data the input of this will be word one comma eight word one comma two and word two comma one and now uh, the final uh, 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 finally again the reduce by key logic will execute here it will add uh, these two values for word one and emit the uh, one for word two with and the output will be word one comma ten and word two comma one so this is how it will work so even though you execute um, different commands for flat map, map and reduce by key, um, it might uh, club those things completely or partially. In this case, most likely the flat map and map will be clubbed and the reduce by key logic will be applied uh, to generate the intermediate uh, results for each of the task and those intermediate results will be processed with a final task which will give you the final results which will be printed uh, when you actually execute uh, for, uh, for, for loop or for each loop if it is PySpark or Scala. In PySpark you will use for loop, in Scala you will use for each function on top of the RDD and it will print the results. If you are from Hadoop background, um, you might have written MapReduce programs and there are only map and reduce and you have to implement the functionality in detail when it comes to spark they have already covered lot of those details lot of those functionalities in map uh, flat map uh, reduce by key group by key aggregate by key etc and uh, you can actually generate um, aggregation based upon uh, using uh, same aggregation using different functions for example instead of reduce by key as we have seen here, you can use group by key also and you can use aggregate by key also. All the three will uh, generate the same results but under the covers there are subtle differences which you need to understand. I will cover those things later. But for now when you have the reduce by key and if you are from Hadoop background, 
you might heard about combiners and when you reduce by key the combiners uh, will be automatically implemented as part of your program uh, you don't need to worry about implementing the combiner so this is how um, this word count program execute uh, the uh, you just have to define uh, a, a flat map to split each line into words and then uh, map uh, to actually associate uh, numeric one uh, for each string uh, for each word and then reduce by key which includes the combiner as well as reducer uh, internally to get the uh, uh, to, to get your final aggregation if you use uh, group by key instead of reduce by key uh, another solution or another function which you can be used to get the same results uh, and the group by key does not uh, use uh, the combiner internally uh, hence depending upon whether doing, you are doing aggregation or some other task uh, if the combiner uh, has to be implemented then you have to decide whether to use reduce by key versus group by key anyway we will see those details later when we actually talk about aggregations which is part of uh, the certification syllabus that being said, I hope you are enjoying the content on my channel. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to provide the feedback, please use the comment section of the video. And if you want to discuss on any of these top topics, um, please join my LinkedIn group, IT Varsity Hadoop Certifications. We can ha have a discussion on this or any other certification as well. And if you uh, have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. You will get to see a lot more content like this over time. Thank you. Bye.